I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us uh, Senator Gary Stevens from Kodiak, a uh, longtime legislator, you're a true veteran, and a longtime uh, person in uh, education. Well, thank you, Mike. So, I, uh, it's 20 years now, which really is a surprise to me. I hadn't really planned on it when I first ran, but it's been a, a great pleasure. And you had a career in education before that? Yes, I, I retired from the University of Taunt. I was a professor, a full professor, tenured, and, uh, and retired from the university and have had no connection since I retired, but um, always very concerned about what happens to the university. So and how long is that? That's 20 years here? Tw 20 years here, yeah. And yeah. 20, how long in the university? It was 25 at the university and then 20 years here. So that's, that's 45. That's, yeah, that's, that's almost that's, a half a century. You're right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So tell us what's going on on the Hill uh, in education and you think what's possible. This year. Sure. Uh, well, we just had a meeting today with the, uh, the joint House and Senate, which uh, education committees, and we've done that uh, several instances, met with the president of the university, had a chance to hear from him on his concerns and, and our concerns about where the university is going. The big bills that we're dealing with, uh, really three of them this year in, um, in education. The first is uh, the Alaska Reads bill, which uh, hopefully will um, wind up with uh, really following kids right from uh, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, third, second grade, third. Uh, it, by the time they get to the end of third grade, they should be able to read at third grade level. So that's really the goal. And we know that the kids are successful if they can, uh, if they can read. And we also know that kids that can't read at, um, at the right level or have trouble in life, they have trouble in relationships, they, have, they wind up more in prison. I mean, the, the statistics are really pretty poor about folks that can't read uh, where they should be. And the second bill is a tribal compact that came out of um, the Alaska um, big meetings we had a few years ago, uh, the Alaska uh, Education um, Committee. And um, the tribal compact would work with tribal entities to, to try to help uh, solve some of the problems that our, that our smaller schools are facing. And the third bill that I'm uh, really concerned about is uh, early, early, early college, which would um, help kids as they move through high school, get credit not only counting to graduate from high school, but it would give them a legitimate credit to go into college as well. So it has to be taught by, by uh, university uh, um, approved professors or teachers and uh, has to be a, a high level and a college level class. And uh, so those are the big three that we're faced well, with. How is, I mean, I know kids now occasionally go to the university to take courses. Uh, I mean, how is that different than we have? Oh, well, the difference is that it would be paid for by uh, the school district. They would be school district students. They wouldn't take all of their classes at the university or, or one of the community colleges. But whatever they took would be paid for by the, uh, by the district. And actually, it would be less expensive for the district than the, uh, the, the price of uh, tuition is less than, uh, than um, it would cost the district to teach that student. So. Uh, it, there's an advantage there. It brings more students into the university, and it also uh, helps kids when they go away to college. If they go away to college, they plan on, on, on going on to the university or wherever. What we found is that uh, the kids that take uh, these classes in high school that also count in college are, are better ready to attend college. They, um, they, don't, uh, they don't have to take remedial classes like basic, you know, Bonehead English, for example, we used to call it when I was in college, and so they, they are ready to go and and, uh, and they're not wasting their own time. Perhaps and college money. isn't so intimidating. To them. Well, I think that's true. Yeah, yeah. I had students who, when when I was teaching, they came uh, right out of the high school and mixed in with my college classes, and and uh, they held up very well. They they were great students. So tell us a little about the reading bill, and I know there's some concerns people want to watch it carefully and how it works. Right, right. Well, uh, basically, the, the idea is to, to find a way to get kids up to speed. And uh, we know that we actually, you know, the, the, the fact is that we are 50th out of all the states in the reading ability. And when we have kids tested uh, on, on national tests, we, we score very, very poorly. So uh, this is a realization by I think almost everyone in education that we're not doing things right. And we need to find a way to improve that. Uh, uh, to help more kids uh, learn to read. Uh, I have two granddaughters and I uh, uh, read to them and I know how important that is. Uh, a lot of parents uh, and grandparents don't do that and, um, and so it really, it really harms a kid's future if they can't read at, at the right level when they're going through school. Uh, how would that work at isolated, you know, rural locations where kids obviously come to school sometimes having a 
difficulty reading and the parental support may not be as good. But. Well, you have to, um, have to identify kids early on. And, uh, and so this is not going to be a cheap bill. It's going to cost money. Uh, the governor is supportive of it. And uh, I want to make sure when it leaves the education committee that has a legitimate uh, fiscal notes on it so we know that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. I mean, we can't just say to the districts, uh, you now do this, and with the money you've already got, we've got to add some more funds. We know there'll be reading specialists. Uh, we know if you can identify a child, you know, before they really get into the first grade who's having problems, you can really help them uh, along every, every step of the way. And, um, and, and it's just, a, um, I think, a lot of support for it, but we want to make sure we, we do it right and that, um, you know, the kids are actually moving ahead as they, as they should. One of the things that interests me is that uh, we have um, a lot of kids in Alaska in special ed. I, I just learned recently, uh, it's, all, it's not really, I haven't really seen any paperwork on it, but that uh, a lot of kids who are in special ed um, with special ed teachers are there because they can't read at the right level. So, you know, I, I, a lot of legitimate reasons for kids to be in special ed, uh, you know, um, emotional development, uh, intellectual development, what, whatever it might be, um, physical ability, difficulties and all that sort of thing. But um, if, we are, if we are wasting a lot of our special ed monies in, in uh, trying to bring kids up to read when they're already in the fifth or sixth or high school, then that we could do it earlier. And um, so I, from, from what I understand from people telling me, we'll see if it's true, but that we could uh, reduce uh, special ed costs by just simply making sure that every kid reads at the right level. Gary, believe it or not, we're out of time and it's been a pleasure to have you. Uh, this is Capital Views. I'm Mike Bradner, and we've been talking to Senator Gary Stevens, a Republican from Kodiak. Thanks, Thank Gary. you, Matt. Uh, my pleasure to be with you, Matt. Thanks.